It's the story of the younger son who takes his inheritance, moves away, and wastes his living in a riotous way, the Bible says. He finally comes to himself and makes his way back home to the Father. They welcome him, and we pick it up in verse 25. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come home, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. So get that picture with me for just a moment. The older son hears the music. And there's no mistaking, even though he was upset about it, there was no mistaking this was music and this was a celebration. Something was occurring. And indeed, it was the music of celebration. The hills around were alive with the sound of that music because the sun had returned home. That's the music. Well, friends, just like the music that echoed through the hills that day, There is also music that echoes down from the hill called Calvary. The hill called Golgotha. And if we hear that music, it also can make us alive and help us experience all that God has for us in our lives. And so let's hear the story of that hill as well today. Follow along with me. They stripped Jesus and put a scarlet robe on Him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on His head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a hill called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, They offered him wine to drink mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified Jesus, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, this is Jesus, King of the Jews. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Friends, I want you to know this morning, that the Lord and Savior who went to the cross that day did so to show us how much God loves us. And the music of that love echoes down from the hill. And God wants us to hear that music for our own lives. To receive that music. To embrace that music. So that it can transform who we are. There was music of celebration for the Son's return. There is music that comes down from Calvary. For you and for me. What's the nature of this sound of music that echoes forth from the hill today? Well, first of all, the sound of music that echoes from the cross is the music of reunion. The music of reunion. Just like for the party for the younger son, it was a music because he had been reunited with his family. A relationship that was severed had been brought back together. That which is broken was reunited. That which was apart was reconciled. The family was restored. And so the music echoing in that place was the music of reunion. And likewise, brothers and sisters, the music that comes down from the hill of Mount Calvary is also the music of reunion. Because of what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. The relationship between God and humanity, that relationship is restored. Even though I may have broken covenant with God, I might not have lived as I should have, I may have missed the mark many times, I may feel separated from God from time to time, it doesn't matter to God because He loves us so much that He seeks for us to be united with Him. Understand that. The very God who gave you birth, the very God who created you, longs to live in a restored relationship with you every day. You don't have to live life on your own. You don't have to try to make it on your own power. You don't have to conjure up hope by yourself. Why? Because the music of reunion comes down. Will you hear and embrace that music for yourself 
guy tells a story of years ago, it was a longer story, Martin Frederick was his name. Martin Frederick tells a story of his parents, his mom died at his birth. So he was going to be raised by a very young, single dad. And he said his dad, probably, Martin says he was four or five years old, could not handle the task anymore. And so he placed Martin in child care, in foster care, excuse me. And so Frederick was raised by his foster parents, two or three different sets of foster parents. And in the article he says, they were wonderful to me. They were beautiful to me. He said, the only thing that my first set of foster parents told me about my birth father was that he was a big guy. And he said, as a four-year-old, I, can still, I could still kind of picture him. But as I got older, it started to fade. He was a big guy and he loved the Beatles. He loved the Beatles. Well, as often happens with young people in a similar situation, when he got older, he decided he wanted to seek out his birth father. And so he found out. He found out as much as he could. And finally, after a long story, he says, the day came in which we were going to be reunited. We decided we would meet at a large city park near where we lived. He said he went that Sunday afternoon. It was a beautiful Sunday afternoon. The place was packed with people. The parking lot was filled with cars. Martin Frederick says, I walked into that scene and I thought, how in the world am I supposed to find my dad? But then he said, amidst all of the hustle and bustle, he heard some music blasting from the other side of the parking lot. I want to hold your hand by the Beatles. And he listened. Yep, that was it. The Beatles, I want to hold your hand. That's a classic hit by the Beatles. And so he started walking to that far edge of the parking lot and sure enough, there was an older man sitting in the car with his windows rolled down. It was his dad. The music of reunion that conjured up the memory for Martin Frederick was the music of the Beatles. I want to hold your hand. And it led to them being reunited. Now the music that echoes down from Calvary, although I want to hold your hand wouldn't be a bad thing, but the music that comes down from Calvary today says, I want you to know of my love. I want you to know the hope that I can bring to your life. I want you to know that whatever the circumstances or situations of your life, I want to live in reconciliation, in union, in relationship with you every day. This is the music of God's Word that echoes down from Calvary. So friends, no matter the circumstances or situations of your life, no matter if anyone else even knows about those circumstances or situations. You need to know today that the music that comes forth from the cross is music for you and it's music for me. And we don't have to live life on our own anymore. We're not alone. We can be reunited with the very God who created us to start with. That's the music of reunion that echoed in the hall when the Father welcomed the younger son back and it echoes down from Calvary for you and me. Will you embrace that music and be united with your God on this day? Secondly, the sound of music that echoes from the cross is the sound, the music of victory. The music of victory. That's what was happening in Luke 15. There was a victory won. Why? Because the son had been away and he had come home. He was lost and now he was found. It was a call for celebration. They killed the fatted calf, only reserved for extremely special occasions. They brought out and prepared a feast. It was a feast of victory because one had returned home. And friends, the music that echoes down from Calvary is also the music of victory for you and me. You say, preacher, what kind of victory are you talking about? Well, at least a few levels. Quite simply, first of all, there's victory over sin. Even though I know in my life that I have missed the mark many times, I've been less than faithful toward God. In spite of that, He offers me forgiveness. In fact, Jesus said in Himself on the cross, Father, forgive them. There's victory over sin. Here's how it happens. Forgiveness brings freedom. And freedom brings strength. And strength brings power so that I can remain focused in my living and I don't have to keep missing the mark every single day. I can become more focused and more on target in terms of living God's kingdom way. So the music of victory is victory over sin through the great forgiveness that God has for us. What a blessed gift it is. It's victory for our pain. 
You're not alone with your pain. Say, how do you know that? Because Jesus Christ has experienced pain Himself. Part of the meaning of the cross is that God doesn't remain absent from our pain, but that He participates in our pain fully. Therefore, we can trust Him, knowing that He can bring us victory even amidst the pain and suffering and difficulties of life. Several years ago, a minister friend of mine the church that he was serving at the time, the, the youth group was going to be a reenactment of the Passion on Good Friday. And they were going to play it all out, the trial, the cross, the, the whole thing. And he said he had a, a, a brother and sister that were in that youth group. And the day of the play, the brother was to play Jesus, and the sister was one of the weeping women around the cross, the women who were crying. And he said, but the day of that, the brother and sister were driving together, the sister was driving, and they were in an automobile accident. Now they were okay, but the sister was absolutely overwhelmed by what could have been. She kept saying to her brother all day, I could have killed you. It really shook her up. If you've ever been in an accident, even if you're okay, it shakes you up. She was shook up emotionally. So the evening came for the play. The brother was playing Jesus. He was coming down the aisle carrying his cross. There were Roman soldiers there. They came to the women who had gathered up here who were weeping. And then he said, what happened was, is when the sister, who was a weeping woman, looked at the brother, again, overcome by the emotions of the day, she didn't fake tears. She burst out crying, audibly, weeping, thinking again of what might have happened. And then he said something totally unexpected happened. The big brother carrying the cross he stopped and he saw his sister crying. And he took the cross off his shoulder and he gave it to one of the Roman soldiers and he said, hold on to this for a moment, I'll be right back. <laughs> and he walked over to his sister and he gave her a hug. He said, sis, I'm okay. It's going to be alright. Then he went back and picked up the cross. Now, you know, you think about that for a moment, you think, boy, well, the play's a waste now. You know, there's nothing in the Scriptures about Jesus handing His cross to a soldier and say, can you hold this just a second? I'll be right back. <laughs> but it was exactly the opposite. You can sense that, can't you? My friend said it was the most powerful moment in the whole thing. Because for real life, part of the meaning of the cross got actually acted out. Because we are not alone with our pain. Jesus embraces us in our pain. He gives us comfort. He gives us strength. That's part of why He went to the cross to start with. To embrace us in that way. And friends, so if you're experiencing difficulties or pain or suffering or trials in your own life today or in the lives of those that you love, know that you are not alone. There is victory amidst your pain because we have one who understands it and can journey with us through that suffering and difficulty every step of the way. Victory over sin. Victory for our pain. Finally, there's, there's victory that gives life. It's the music of victory that brings us life. Can it be that an instrument of death can actually be the key to victorious living? Well, in God's hands, that's exactly what it is. Because it's always the unexpected. He turns things upside down. He takes that which we think is one way and transforms it into another way that ends up to be life and hope and victory for all of us. It is the music of victory and new life. In closing, it was one of those days as I was thinking about this week, and it, it, this actually has happened to me in one form or another more than once probably happened to Steve, to Dan, to Dale, to other pastors who are part of our congregation. I submitted this to the paper as well. I don't know if it'll be there, but it was one of those days of ministry, that's all. Some years ago, I went to the hospital. First, I had to stop the outpatient area where someone from the congregation was having a procedure. I prayed with that family, hoped it would go well. Then I was on my way upstairs because a couple in our church had just had a new baby girl. So I went to the maternity section of the hospital and visited with them and had a prayer of thanksgiving. But then my last stop for that day was to be in the cancer ward. An aged saint, a very dear friend in my congregation, she had been diagnosed 
extensively with cancer and was nearing the end. And so I went to visit her. And there she was, as always, full of faith and hope, right into the very face of death. Wonderful. I was sad, she seemed fine. That's just the kind of faith that she had. And as I was visiting with her, in the hallway outside, the music sounded throughout the hospital. I don't know if you know this or if you've been there, but they play a little lullaby music every time a baby's born in a lot of hospitals. And sure enough, another baby was born right at that moment. And so that baby, that lullaby music echoes through the hallways. And her face, my friend's face, nearing death, she looked at me and she said, Well, preacher, once again, once again, God brings new life to the world. I said, yes, ma'am. And then she said, Ken, do me a favor. You go find that family that just had a baby. And you tell them that I said, God has some new beginnings in mind for them and a plan for their baby like they've never dreamed or imagined. You go tell them that. And we prayed together and I took my leave. But I was determined to make good on that and to follow through. So the next morning when I came to see the couple in the maternity section again, they were actually getting ready to go home, but I went to see them. I then asked and I inquired with the nurses there, hey, you know, there was another baby born uh, late yesterday. Are, is that family still here? Yes, she said, in fact, they are. So I went down the hall. Never met them before, but I introduced myself. And I told them why I was there. And I told them that story. And I said, I just want you to know that she says, God has new beginnings in mind for you like you've never dreamed and a plan for your child like you've never seen. And they appreciated it. And I had a prayer of thanksgiving. I couldn't wait to get back down to the cancer ward to tell my friend that I had followed through on her request and the response of that family. But when I walked down there, I realized as I neared the door, and it ended up I was just about a half an hour too late, the family had already gathered. She had already passed, and she was laying in her bed. I wanted so much to tell her that that message of new beginnings had been passed along. But somehow, friends, I know she knew. You understand that? I know she knew. And let me tell you something else. That lullaby music of new life, that could have sounded in the hallway again at that very moment. And that would have been great. Because guess what? I would have said, like her, once again, God gives new life. Once again, God gives new life. Because it's not the end for my friend, but a beginning because of her faith in the love and the cross of Jesus Christ. That, my friends, is the music that echoes down. The music of victory that brings life to every single one of us. I pray today that you will embrace and receive and hear again the sound of that music that makes us alive. It's the sound and music of reunion. It's the sound and music of victory. Friends, it's for you. It's for me. It's for our world. Will you receive that today? Once again, God heals the brokenhearted. Once again, hope is given. Once again, new life enters the world. Once again, there is joy even amidst sorrow. Once again, our Lord comes through. Will you bow with me in prayer? Lord God, we give you thanks and praise that our Savior was willing to enter the city knowing that that journey would lead Him quickly to the cross. Help us to hear Your music on this day. To be assured within our hearts of Your love, Your mercy, Your grace. Knowing that You desire to be united and restored in our relationship and knowing that you desire to bring us victory 
amidst all of the circumstances of life. Once again, O oh God, may we experience your love. Once again, may we encounter your hope. Once again, may we dedicate our lives to following you, not half-heartedly, but wholeheartedly. Give us wisdom and courage today. Give us that wisdom and courage according to your Holy Spirit. Once again, in Christ's name we pray.